Lesson 13.3, Area of Combined Rectangles. It's very important that you saw 13.2, which is linked in the description, because we're going to continue learning some things that we learned in that video. Combined rectangles are rectangles that are next to each other. They might not show all the sides of all the rectangles, but we can pencil them in to find the area. So here we have these combined rectangles. We have one here and one here. We can draw a dotted line across this way to show there's two different rectangles. Then we can find the area of this one, find the area of this one. We could also put the line going vertically this way and split it into a rectangle here and a little rectangle here. If the combined rectangles are drawn on grid paper, we can count the number of unit squares inside the shape. If one square is equal to one square foot, the area for the combined rectangles is equal to 18 square feet. We just count the squares. We could split the shape into separate rectangles, count the unit squares of each rectangle, then add them to get a total area. We would have 10 plus 8 if one square is equal to one square foot, it would be equal to 18 square feet. We can use the area formula that we learned in video 13.2. Here we have a diagram, and it's showing us this side is 5 feet, this little side is 2 feet, this little side is 2 feet, and this side is 6 feet. It's not showing a measure for this side. Do you know how we can figure that out? If this side is 6 feet and this is 2 feet, then that means that's 2 feet. That must be 4 in order to be equal to 6. So we would have a 2 plus 4. And if that part is a 4, the opposite side is a 4. We have area is equal to base times height. We learned that we can use a little dot for multiplication. And actually, mine's a little low. It needs to be floating, doesn't it? We don't want to confuse it with a decimal point. We have our blue rectangle. It's 5 feet times 2 feet. That's 10 square feet. And our pink one is 2 feet times this 6 minus this 2. So if that's 2, then that's 2. That means this must be 4. So we're going to do a 6 minus this 2 to get 2 times 4, which is 8 square feet. And 10 plus 8 is equal to 18 square feet. We needed to use the area formula twice. We can also divide the combined rectangles into other ways to find the total area. We have a blue rectangle that's 5 times 2, that's 10. We know this entire side is 6, and if this little side is 2, that means this little blue side is a 2. That means this is a 4, so we have 2 times 4, which is 8 for the pink rectangle. That's 18 square feet. We could split it like this, so we have one big pink one and a smaller blue one. Then we have 2 times 3, which is 6, and 2 times 6, which is 12, that would be 18 square feet. So if you notice, this is 2 feet here. That means that's 2 feet. And if the whole thing is 5 feet, we take away this little 2 foot area to find out the base for the blue one. See? We're left with 3. We could also split it into 3. We have a pink rectangle, a blue rectangle, and a green square. We can add the area for the green one, 4, plus the area for the blue one, 6, plus the area for the pink one, 8, and we'll get 18 square feet. But if we do it this way, we're finding three areas, and it would be slower, be much quicker to just use two rectangles. And remember, the commutative property of multiplication states that we can multiply in any order and we'll get the same product. So we can use any side for the base and any side for the height. 
and the commutative property of addition states we can add in any order and we'll get the same sum. So we can add the areas of the rectangles in any order to get a total area. We can use addition or subtraction to find area. Mr. Lee is installing new carpeting in his son's bedroom and the diagram shows the dimensions, that means the measures, of the carpet to be installed. And the space is made of combined rectangles. So maybe the yellow area is his closet, right? So what's the area of the carpeted space? So we need the combined rectangles area. And using addition, we find the area as two rectangles, the yellow one and the blue one, and add their areas. So we can take this diagram of combined rectangles and we can actually split it like this and make two rectangles. We can see that this is three feet and this is three feet. This is seven feet, so we have seven times three for the yellow area. That's 21 square feet. And we have 12 feet times 10 feet, which is 120 square feet. We add the 21 plus the 120, and it's equal to 141 square feet. We used the base times the height to find the area and then added them together. Using subtraction, we multiply the longest base, so that would be the 15 feet, by the longest height, that would be the 10 feet. We find the area of the missing space and subtract that area from the great rectangle. rectangle. So we would do 15 times 10, which is 150 square feet, and then we would do three times three, which is nine, and subtract that from the one big great rectangle. That would be 141 square feet. So remember, there can be more than one way to solve a problem, but one way is usually easier than the other. You may find addition to be easier and adding this as a separate rectangle. You may find that subtracting this space from one great rectangle might be easier. We need to find the area of the combined rectangles. So we have this shape. Now notice some sides don't show a measure. Look at that. We're missing a measure here, down here, on this side, and over here. Well, we don't need them because they're equal to the opposite side. If that's five centimeters, and it looks like we have a right angle, don't we, right here? That means that's five centimeters. And if this up here is five centimeters, then this is five centimeters. If this is 10 centimeters, then this is 10 centimeters. See? And we divide the combined rectangles into the fewest number of rectangles to go quicker and do less work. So there's many ways we could divide this. We could split it up like this, and we'd have one, two, three, four rectangles that we would have to find the area for but it would be much more efficient, much quicker, easier, to divide it into fewer rectangles. Then we have one, two, three rectangles. We only have to do the area formula three times instead of four. We have five times 10. Well, that's 50 square centimeters. See, it's marked centimeters. Then for this one, what is this length here? Well, if you look, this is 10 and that's four. If that's 4 and this is 10, then coming right along here, it must be 4 plus 6 to make that 10. See? We're using a little common sense. That means this piece right here is 6, and then we've got a 5 centimeter piece. If that's 6 and that's 5, the whole thing must be 11. We have to do some detective work. That means we're doing 10 times 11, which is 110 square centimeters. So if that confused you, we know this is four centimeters. That means this is four centimeters. And it's telling us the whole thing is 10. And if that's four, in order for this to be 10, the remaining part must be six. So that means that is six. 
if this part is 6 and this part is 5, the whole thing is 11. We've got the one on the right side. We've got 5 times 10 for this entire side. That's another 50 square centimeters. And we could write in the unlabeled measures if that would help. We could write that that's a 10, that's a 5, that's a 5, if it would help us. Now we take the three areas, 50, 110, and 50. We add them together. We know the entire thing is 210 square centimeters. Make sure you put that square there, okay? Like we talked about in the last video. Mr. Lee will add a new section to his garden. His garden is currently, that means now, 48 square meters. We can see it's 12 meters by 4 meters. This is his current garden, so that would be his new section. What will the total area of the garden be after he adds the new section? So we think we need to find the area of the new section and add it to the 48 square meters that it told us for the total. Using area is equal to base times height. The new section is 8 meters times 6 meters. That's 48 square meters. We know the current garden is 48 square meters, so we just add 48 plus 48. We get 96 square meters. And as the dog says, we could also subtract the missing area. We know that this is 6. If this is 8 and this is 12, then this must be 4 because that's the difference between 8 and 12. So this missing area would be 6 times 4, which is 24. And we would do 12 times 10 because we have a 6 and a 4. We know this whole length is a 10. We do 12 times 10, which is 120, and subtract that 24. We'd still get 96 square meters. So we could use addition or subtraction. I prefer to use addition in this one because of the way the sides were labeled, it was easier for me. We can find this area as one great rectangle, pretending this is not missing, then subtract the missing area. If this was one great rectangle, we would just do 8 times 6, which would be 48, it's marked in yards, so that would be square yards. And it's labeled that this is two yards, and this piece is two yards. So you know it's three times two, that's six. We subtract this missing area, this white area, as six square yards, 48 minus six is 42. We know the green area is 42 square yards. And we could have used addition, couldn't we? We could have made one, two, three rectangles, or we could have made this one rectangle, then a little square and a rectangle by drawing a line this way. So we could have divided it going across this way, or we could have divided it coming down this way, couldn't we? In this case, I thought it was easier to just do one great rectangle and just subtract that one little part. Then I don't have to do the area formula so many times. So again, there can be more than one way to solve a problem but one way is usually easier than the other. And what you think is easier may not be easier for someone else. And remember, we learned this in the last video, we can use length times width or base times height to find the area of a rectangle. So this we're talking about rectangles. So we could say this is a length, this is a width, we could say that's the base, that's the height, it's the same thing. So if it's six inches across and three inches going this way, we could do six times three, and we can switch it around and say that three is the base and six is the height if we wanted to. And the length times width, we could say six times three, it's still 18 square inches. Or we could say that that is the length and that is the width because we can use any side as the base or as the length. And of course, video 13.2 is linked in the description if you missed it. We had a lot of really good information in that video. So remember to label your answer as 
the square measurement, like square inches, square centimeters, square feet, square meters, whatever it is, make sure you put that word square there. And when you're trying to find an unknown measure, just remember that opposite sides of rectangles are equal to each other. So you can figure out what a missing measure is and you can write them in to help you. Our next lesson, 13.4, we're going to find unknown measures. So they're going to give us the total area and maybe only one other measure. Like maybe they're only going to give us the base and we have to figure out what the height is by doing what we did here and going backwards. I hope I'll see you there. Have a great day. Bye.